Wednesday morning, um, and I believe it's Halloween today, the 31st. Happy Halloween. Um, I'm dressed as me, so you can uh, not buy this costume anywhere because I am an original. I am going to do a little bit of work on my Craftsman 42 inch today, and uh, but before I do that, I'm going to take my new Monster Moto 80 up there for a little ride to McDonald's and get myself a uh, McMuffin with a round egg. You gotta get the round egg. All right. Even if you get a McGriddle, say you want a sausage, egg, and cheese McGriddle with a round egg. Tell them you want a round egg because that other egg, that layered egg that's in there, that's liquid crap. That's not a real egg. Um, tell them you want a round egg and they actually crack an egg in those little metal discs on the grill and that's, you know, that's how they, that's, that, it's a round egg. It's a real egg. It makes a huge difference. Um, and now my kid, my older kid who likes McGriddles and McMuffins, but he prefers McGriddles, now has to get it with a round egg, and it drives his mother crazy. <laughs> Love it. So I'm going to check a few things out on this mower right here on the 16-horse uh, Kohler. It seems to, like, purge a little up and down, up and down, up and down. So we're going to go ahead and check the governor and uh, check the carburetor and see what's going on there today. And I did take a few days off from work um, yesterday, today, tomorrow, Friday. Kind of like four-day vacation leading up to the weekend. Uh, I've been very tired, very run down. Um, almost feel like, um, like I'm two beers in on a six-beer night. I kind of feel like that, um, like constantly. So I was like, you know what, let me go see a doctor, make sure everything's all right. So everything came back good. Doctor just thinks I'm exhausted. It's been a long summer, man, working every weekend, mowing lawns, doing videos. And then, you know, playing hard with my boys, jogging, um, you know, just, and then working 55 to 60 hour a week, sometimes even 70 hours a week, working six days a week, and then lawns and trees and fertilizing and videos. And everything's just kind of catching up to me. We're in our last few weeks of the side hustle business uh, for the year, and then we really take our, our really take a break. But I don't want to be, I don't want to be dangerous driving my big truck and I was starting to feel a little dangerous driving my big truck. So I told my boss I need to take some time off. Uh, so, you know, paid sick days, paid vacation, medical insurance, 401k, all that stuff matters, man. And, and, and as I'm getting older, you know, that's why I stopped mowing full time and I, I started doing that. Um, but the hours are kind of getting to me. It's a lot of hours. I don't think it would be so bad if I wasn't doing the YouTube and the side hustle and the charity and all that. Um, but when you start adding, you know, 60 hour work weeks, working five to six days a week, and then trying to mow lawns on your days off and trying to do videos after work and answering comments and just from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep, it's 100%, 100 mile per hour stress. Um, just kind of came on to me, you know what I mean? And, and I took the, um, the, responsible route seeing that I do drive a truck that weighs over 50,000 pounds and I was like you know what let me take a few days off before I hurt somebody hurt myself hurt my equipment and uh, so that's what I'm doing so I got some paid vacation I'm uh, working off of right now or sick days however they want to give it to me hopefully they do sick days because in February I'll be there two years I'll lose my sick days but you can if you don't use your sick days you lose them if you don't use your vacation days you can sell them or they get added to your bank time, you know. So uh, I think you get you get six, you get five days vacation your first week, and then I think you get six days or your first year, and then you get like six days vacation your second year or something like that. So you can add that together. Now I don't know how many days vacation you can take at a time, but you know if you don't take vacation for two years, you might be able to take Monday through Friday one month, and then later on Monday through Friday or Monday through Saturday another month. Um, you know something like that but if you don't want to use them you could sell them and get a week's pay added to your week's pay that you just worked so you can get a nice big fat paycheck sell your vacation but you can't sell your sick days so hopefully I don't have a doctor's note but hopefully they're doing a um, they're gonna just do it by sick day pretty sure they will um, but I did do my DOT physical yesterday I did early vote yesterday um, I did a couple videos on my other channel. Please check those videos out having to do with the mini bikes. Uh, we got a new mini bike. We did some oil changing. We did a three month review. Uh, so, you know, the holidays are coming. You might have questions about um, different toys and stuff for your kids. So, 
under four hundred dollars get outside and play rather than four hundred dollar xbox or ps4 you know what i'm saying go get a mini bike go outside with your kid and, and play around whatever um, there's one right there i did the review on that one yesterday and i did a video on how to tighten the chain and did a little few tricks so i'm going to go ahead and take that bike up to the store and uh get me something to eat real quick for breakfast uh, and then we'll be back and we'll do a little work on the mower red bike um, mini bike across highway 17 here this main road to get back to my neighborhood and a police officer stopped me and uh, he liked the bike and everything but he was like hey listen you know in your neighborhood it's cool down this little road it's cool through the parking lot at the shopping centers is cool he said but walk it across the four-lane highway so he's like as long as you do that you'll be all right and I was like all right cool thanks so that's what we're gonna do in another video about fuel caps on some of these machines um, especially your larger machines are really going to be affected by it uh, you'll get a vacuum in your fuel tank as your fuel goes down you get a vacuum and what's going to happen is the air hole on the top of your fuel cap sometimes it'll be a hole like this sometimes it'll be in the middle um, or some now these new fancier <coughs> fuel caps are like big and there's no hole on top at all it works with like venting through the seals and stuff around um, but when you have like an older fuel cap like this what will happen is a lot of dirt and debris and moisture and stuff will make its way into these little pee holes and you should be able to blow through it not super easy but you should be able to blow through it and what that's going to do is when, the, when this is on and the fuel's going down, it allows the air to go into the tank so the fuel can go down. If this was sealed, okay, and the fuel's up here, and as the fuel's going down, there's going to be a massive vacuum from the top of the fuel to the cap. And you're trying to bring fuel, you're trying to suck fuel through a straw, basically, through this fuel line. And, and there's going to be back pressure pulling the fuel back up. What's happening is you're squeezing the tank. The fuel coming out is squeezing the tank in. And then what happens is this air hole right here allows the air to, to go in and that'll pop your tank back out. 
So if you don't have this right, as the fuel's going down, it's creating back pressure. It's going to make your fuel pump work harder. Um, if you have a fuel pump, you might have a gravity feed like this. This is gravity feed. Um, it's not going to gravity feed. It's going to vacuum lock in your tank. So you have to make sure that your fuel cap is clean. And if it's not, clean it or go buy a new fuel cap. They're not expensive at all. Um, that's what these are for right here. Mine was a little bit hard to blow through, so I used my blow gun and I held this and I put it up here and I blew and then I switched and then I blew and then I put it here. And you can hear like, you can hear things inside there until it finally went clear. And now I can blow through it. So that's gonna stop the vacuum. That could be a reason why my, my motor was surging. You see me lift the hood up and un, undo the cap and then re, redo the cap to let air in. That might have solved that problem, maybe. That didn't solve my issue, my surging problem. And it's kind of annoying. So what I ended up doing is I took the air cleaner off, I took these two 10 millimeter uh, nuts off the carburetor studs, I pulled the carburetor off, I cleaned the crap out of it. This is a fuel cutoff switch right here that works on your key and it, it's got a plunger that goes up and it turns fuel off from going up through the bowl, up through your main jet. So I took the carburetor off, real simple, easy to do, um, cleaned it all up real good with carb throttle body cleaner whatever it's called throttle body cleaner used a little thing here cleaned it up really really good took out the low jet on this side or the air fuel mixture maybe I should call it took that out cleaned in there really really good put that back together super easy not that big of a deal and this is the result but it's better it's livable it's survivable um, I think I still need to take the carburetor off again though and soak it overnight for quite some time I'm pretty sure there's some dirt and stuff in the in the low car uh, the low low idle jet whatever the hell it's called you got your high you know your main you got your low you got all little areas in there where fuel and air mixes I still think there might be a little bit of dirt in there um, you can you can take away the low part of your throttle. There's a little set screw right here that will stop this from going back and forth. It'll hold it at its open spot, which is full throttle. And you'll get rid of that. You'll get rid of that. But you'll also get rid of your ability to go down with your throttle. Watch what I mean. If you look right back here, this thing will hit a set screw right here. If you tighten this right here, just a little bit, I can see, I have to look over my glasses, just a little bit. Now when I fire this up,
smooth it is, it's not. But I lose my low idle. Watch. Can you live with that? I can, and I will. That's how it's gonna stay. What I ended up doing once I got this thing back together, the carburetor all back together, is this morning we went for that ride on the mini bike all the way back down behind all the houses, all the way to Highway 17. And it was kind of struggling in that really tall grass. Uh, so what I went ahead and did, um, what, I, what I went ahead and did, what I ended up doing was um, with the mower deck down to about four inches, three and three quarter inches, I cut a path from here all the way to Highway 17, just over a mile. Turned around and came right back over that same pass, a little bit lower now to about three and a quarter inches. And so I cut a really nice path going all the way up to Highway 17 behind all these houses. And uh, the reason why I did that is it's Wednesday, and this weekend when my kids come over, we're going to go bike riding, and they're going to take their mini bikes and stuff. And I might have mine by then, but I might not. If not, I'll have my bicycle. Um, excuse me. Or maybe I'll follow them on the, uh, the Craftsman back there. <laughs> um, so I use this to cut a nice path all the way down the county property, all the way down the canal, the creek or whatever, all the way so it's safe for me and the boys. We can go and ride our dirt bikes, our little mini bikes, not on the roads. I'd rather us be out on the grass and stuff like that. And so it was nice for me to go out there, cut a nice path to make it a little bit easier to ride because, you know, they're young. And, um, you know, make some vibrations in the ground, get rid of some critters, some snakes, scare them off. And, uh, you know, look for twigs and stuff like that, that. You know, not twigs, but branches. So I did a nice path all the way down, nice path all the way back. So that should make things much better. We'll go for a ride later on. Um, but something else you guys asked me about, right inside here on the on this wheel is a grease fitting and then right inside there I already greased it but I think I had the camera on right there is a grease fitting uh, I did not find any grease fittings on the steering shaft and I did not find any grease fittings on the forward or reverse pedals but I'm sure a squirt of white lithium or something will suffice okay I am not I am not a grease gun pro, okay, uh, but a comment was made to me, oh, Heavy Mechanic, you comment a lot, Heavy Mechanic, uh, thank you, I believe you're the one that reminded me about the um, grease fittings in the wheel, on the actual wheel itself, the front wheels itself, to, to uh, grease the wheel where it mounts onto the spindle, I believe that was you, and for some reason, you always come up in my spam, or you come up in my like held for review so if you leave me a comment heavy mechanic if you leave me a comment and you see it doesn't show up you're not blocked it's just when I can get to that folder I go ahead and approve your comments so they show up uh, but yeah you're the one that actually gave me the information um, I remember right thank you grease guns or pain in the butt and somebody asked me hey Dan what's up with this handle why is your handle sticking all the way out when I use my grease gun my handle all the way in that's how I you know I guess that's how he primes the, the tube and I said well I'll, I'll show you on video instead of trying to explain it to you this is a Lucas grease gun it's probably a, a better than not better grease gun it's probably a good one and what it does is um, it's got like this little release valve right here and so what I do is when I put a new tube in a new tube of grease you know you pull this all the way out and it locks because of this comes you know it grabs this and it locks it out all right unscrew your top here which I don't want to do but unscrew your top here pull out your old can your old tube put your new tube in and uh, pop the top put this back on 
And then what I do, what I do, I'm not saying this is right, but this works, is I hold this release valve. Now, this is the only one that I've ever had that has a release valve. The other like cheap shit you buy over the counter, um, never really had these release valves and I would always have problems. But ever since I got this, this Lucas brand grease gun and I have no idea where I got it from, probably Harbor Freight, but I'm not sure. Um, you squeeze this down and then pop this lever right here. And you see how that arm just moved in until it met the grease? And then this lets the pressure out. So the grease now goes all the way to here. And then this keeps positive pressure on this side of the grease with positive pressure because this is spring loaded. So that is how I run my grease guns. And then and I store them, I hook it like this. That's how I, I store it. So the grease is always falling down anyways. Um, and I, I really never have a problem. Now, as I'm pumping, if it goes, you know, and it's, you can feel when you got grease or when you don't, you'll feel, you know, you'll feel it in there. And then like, if it goes boop and it's, oop, uh oh, then all I do is hold the air pressure valve again, let that go and hit that button again. And this will go moving in more and meet the back of where the grease is now, because as you're pumping, this is the grease is it's primed and it's pulling the grease out till you hit an air pocket or something then you do it again that's why my handle is out is that the right way to do it I don't know but if the wrong way to do it makes it so grease works every time I pump then I'll take it I'll do the wrong way every time because it works like a champ so that's why my grease gun is is that way um, it's actually the next day and I didn't hit record <laughs> And we talked about this in yesterday's video when I greased up the Red Craftsman and um, fixed the little surging issue. I don't really want to say it's fixed. I just want to say it's solved. It's not fixed. It's solved. Um, I solved the problem. It's not doing it anymore. But I didn't fix the problem. Uh, so will there be any long-term effects over what we did? Uh, no, not really. Uh, so. But now what I want to do in today's video is I'm going to run up to Andy's. I'm going to get new valve cover gasket and we're going to adjust the valves on this Craftsman 16 horse Kohler Pro engine. So I'm going to run up there, get the valve cover gaskets from them. Hopefully they have them in stock. And um, if not, I don't know, I'll, I'll try to find some. But that's what I would like to do today and adjust the valves on this while I'm still on semi vacation from work. Um, I need to verify the valve lash or the gap, whatever you want to call it. I believe it's going to be 4,000. That seems to be what it is on like every mower, every four cycle motors, like everybody's setting their valve lash to 4,000. So uh, we'll do that uh, today, hopefully in today's video that you will see in the next video. All right. So thank you guys so much and I will see you on the next one.